foundational idea, who is the author of the action? Is the Atma the Karta? Is the Atma the doer? Is Prakriti the doer? Is God the doer? So there are different philosophies. And uh, they come to different conclusions. And my observation, talking about other communities, I'm not talking about here, I don't know. Um, but in other communities, even in ISKCON, in our society, there are different uh, understanding, different conclusions. So I thought, let's explore it together. Okay? You like, you like the idea? Okay. Om Gyan Ati Miranda Sya Gyan Jana Salakya Chakshuram Merita Mena Tasmai Shri Guru Vidma Nam Shura Krishna Nam Om Vishnu Badaya Krishna Pristaya Budali Shimadi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gurmani Pisharine Nirvishesha Shunivadi Paschatya Desha Tarine Bhansha Kalpa Tarubhisha Kripa Sindhu Evacha Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vishnu Vibhyo Namunha so let's start with a, a general definition, like an English, English word definition, what action means. And we go to Wikipedia. So, uh, action theory, philosophy. Action, behavior caused by an agent in a particular situation. The agent's desires and beliefs, for example, my wanting a glass of water and believing the clear liquid in the cup in front of me is water, lead to bodily behavior, reaching over for the glass. So in other words, they give a psychological definition as the root of the action. Desires and beliefs. In this case, they give the example of a glass of water. I'm thirsty, I want to drink, that's my desire. And the belief is that I see a glass of water, it was a glass of a transparent liquid, and I believe it's water. It could be nitroglycerin, for what I know. But I believe it's water. So, then, this beliefs and desire uh, lead to bodily behavior, like reaching over for the glass and drink, like we see here. This gentleman needs to learn to also close the mouth when he drinks. But you get the idea, you get the idea. He thinks the water is water and then he wants to drink and he brings the glass to the mouth. But he has not yet learned to drink properly. <coughs> anyway, if it joins the Brahmacharya Ashram here, he will learn that too. <laughs> so, when we come to us, the, the, the uh, Gaudiya Vaishnavas, uh, the Srila Prabhupada Nugas, the, the, the East devotees, what is our belief? Who is the Karta? And often, we conclude that the Karta is... Prakriti, or the gunas, material nature, the influences of material nature. And the, the, apparently there are legitimate reasons for that, because there are verses that exactly say it's like that. There's several verses in our texts that says that uh, a person who thinks to be the author is an illusion. Said all the time, for instance, here in the 11th canto, we can probably read this together. Daiva dine sharirismin Guna bhavina karmana Vartamano buddhastatra Karta smiti nibhadyate An unintelligent person, a Buddhas. Re, uh, situated within the body created by his previous fruitive activities, thinks, I am the performer of action. Bewildered by false ego, such a foolish person is therefore bound up by 
fruitive activities, which are in fact uh, carried out by the modes of nature. So karta smiti, this idea of being the karta here uh, indicates a foolish person. And perhaps among all this ver type of verses, the next is the most famous, 3.27 Bhagavad Gita. Prakrite kriyamanani Gunai karmani sarvashaha Ahankara vimudhatma Kartaham iti manyate The spirit soul bewildered by the influence of false ego thinks himself the doer of activities that are in actuality carried out by three modes of material nature. So, ahankara, false ego, vimudhatma, the atma, the self who is vimuda, uh, who is becoming bewildered by ahankar, kartaham, he thinks to be the author. So it seems that the discussion is settled and we can practically finish this presentation here because it's, it's clear that Kartaham, only a, a, a person who is bewildered by material nature thinks to be the author. But uh, it actually transpires that there is more to that. For instance, in the... This I put to represent the gunas. Anyway, don't worry about that. Uh, in in Srila Prabhupada's purport, in Srila Prabhupada's purport, Srila Prabhupada says, the person in material consciousness is convinced by false ego that he is the doer of everything. He does not know that the mechanism of the body is produced by material nature, which works under the supervision of the Supreme Lord. In other words, what this person, bewildered by false ego, forgets is that the body works according to certain dynamics, to certain mechanics, which are first of all created by the Lord, and they work independently from the soul. Like, for instance, this is something that is going on right now. As we are all sitting here, um, we are all uh, breathing without even thinking of it, really. And our heart beats. By beating, it pumps blood all over the body. By breathing, we bring oxygen in the lungs. Through the lungs, through the capillary veins, the oxygen goes into the blood, and so on. And this is all going on in you know, hundreds of individuals, and we are not even aware of it. And we are not certainly the creators of these mechanisms. We are guests in this uh, body, and this is going on. And also when we do actually some action, when we actually choose to move the body... There is always an element that, uh, I mean, is always a machine that we have not created, we have not designed, and ultimately we are not even aware how we, we can move it. So the verse says, <coughs> thinking that we are the author, while actually we are using a machine, it's illusory. It's like thinking when you take a car and you drive along the road, you're thinking, I am rolling along the road while well, actually it's the car. You're sitting in the car. At the same time, the purple goes on. And Srila Prabhupada says, the person in false ego takes all credit for doing everything independently. And that is the symptom of his nations. In other words, a key expression here, all credit. In other words, if you, we take all credit then it's illusion. But if we understand that, yes, the machine is not created by us, yes, the machine is going on independently, largely independently, according to the design of the Lord, according uh, to the workings of Prakriti and the Gunas, if we think that it's us, then it's illusion. But 
we have a role to play, as we will be uh, hopefully clear later on. So again, this is an um, thing, this is like a machine. So if the Atma in this body thinks I'm doing this independently, I'm moving my body, I'm moving from point A to point B uh, independently, and I take all credit for that, that's an illusion. But then later on in Bhagavad Gita, if we go to the 18th chapter, we find something that describes uh, the elements of action. There are five elements. Adishtanam tata karta. Karanam cha pratak vidham. Vividas cha pratak cheshta. Dhaivam chaivatra panchamam. So this is crucial because Lord Krishna himself delineates the five factors that compose or determine action. And so let's take a look. The place of action, the body. The performer. The various senses. The many different kinds of endeavor. And ultimately, the super soul. These are the five factors of action. Okay, Adhistanam. <coughs> Basically means the place where the action takes uh, place. Uh, that's the body. Karta. Karta here is the Atma. Now the Atma is identified as the Karta. As the doer. Hmm? Then Karanam, the senses. And then uh, the, the Cheshta, Pritak Cheshta, different endeavors, different efforts. And then Dhaivam. Daivam, the Shira Prabhupada translates super soul. The divine, the divine personality who pervades everything and controls everything, and who is described in Bhagavad Gita as Upadrashta Anumantacha. Upadrashta, the witness. Literally, Upadrashta means one who stays near and sees. Upadrashta. And Anumanta, the sanctioner. Sometimes even in other cultures they say uh, not a blade of grass moves without the will of God. They are describing the Paramatma. So he witnesses everything, simultaneously everything, being present in everybody, and also sanctions the action. So without his sanction nothing will happen. Okay. Then Srila Prabhupada says in the purple, the soul within the body is acting to bring about the results of activity and is therefore known as karta, the doer. See, here we already see almost a, a, a 360 degree changes. Before, the soul who thinks to be the karta was uh, condemned as foolish, as uh, deluded. But here Sri Prabhupada clearly say the karta is the atma because it brings about the result of activity. And Srila Prabhupada doesn't only say it, it gives uh, some uh, Vedic uh, backing. He says that the, that, the, that the soul is the knower and the doer is stated in the Shruti. Esha hi drashta shrashta, Prashnopanisha 9.9. .9. It is also confirmed in the Vedanta Sutra by the verses Gyota Eva. And karta shastrarta, uni, karta shastrarta vat vat. Okay. So let's analyze this evidence that Srila Prabhupada quotes to say that, yeah, the Atma is the karta, the, the self is the doer, in fact. So this is from Prashnopanisha. I'm sorry I don't have the uh, diacritics for this, but you can imagine. Esha hi drashta sprashta shrota rasahita grata manta buddha karta vigyanatma purushaha. The individual spirit soul is the seer, the toucher, the hearer, the taster, the smeller, the thinker, the determiner, the doer, and the knower. So that Atma, that self, that spirit soul, the Jiva Atma is all that. And nothing else in the body 
is dead. Because the body is inert. There is no awareness. So when we see something, when we touch something, when we hear something, is the soul that touches, the hears, and the sees. Yes, there is karanam, there are senses, but the senses are only inert instruments. You're sitting here, I'm looking at you, I see you, there are men this side, women that side, the other, the other element, there are chandeliers, fans, and I can see everything. You can also see everything, you can look around, you can see, you're looking at me now, you're looking at everything. Who is seeing all this? It's the soul. It's the atma. You may say, no, but uh, it's the, the eyes. But the eyes don't see anything. The eyes don't see anything. The eyes are designed to collect certain, a certain range of information, certain range of information from the objects of the senses. And then it gets processed. It goes to the mind. And the mind is like a screen, and uh, the soul sees what's in the, the screen. That's all. And uh, the eyes don't know. The eyes are like uh, a window. So if you look out of the, say, door, you look uh, out of the, 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 now it's a door, otherwise in the window, a door, uh, you look in the street, you see cars, you see people walking. The window is not conscious. So, so, the window is not conscious. The window is only an instrument or via media through which you become aware of external. It's like this fountain started, now it stopped. We became aware. Who became aware? The soul. Only the soul. The ears, they're just holes. Of course, they're a little more complex than that. But they're basically two holes, and so the sound goes inside. And then it gets processed through the nervous system and goes through the brain. But the brain is also inert, and the mind is also inert. So there is no awareness in the body anywhere. The body, we can understand, is not, uh, is not conscious. Uh, if we analyze, it's earth, water, fire, ether, and air. Mm, there are bones, there's blood. Uh, there are nails. Um, it seems a lot is happening, but actually none of this uh, is it's aware of anything. The mind is a little more subtle, but it's still unaware, it's still inert. Look at these two objects, for instance. We have this lectern or book, uh, book stand, very elaborate, but still very simple. Uh, it was a block of... Uh, Wood, and then uh, some carpenter cut it, uh, carved, uh, and its function is quite simple. It just sits here, and you put something on top. We understand this is not aware of anything, right? You can cut it, you can burn it, it won't protest, it won't feel pain, because it's just a piece of matter. Now, if you look at the computer, it may look like it's something much more uh, uh, complex, and it's much more complex. It's much more complex than a book stand. There are thousands and millions of processes, and there are you know, microchips and so many things, and you can see at the screen sometimes. Now the screen is peaceful, but you can put, say, a video, and then there are colors, and there is uh, um, sound, and there is movement, and it seems like there are emotions and thoughts, uh, but actually the computer is not aware of anything. Computer is dead. Completely dead. It's only in there. But because it's more subtle, it's more sophisticated, it performs certain actions that this book stand cannot do. This book stand cannot act as a screen, as a computer screen. But this screen can act, because it's more subtle. So, the matter of our body, or the matter of our shukshma sarira, our subtle body, is inert, jhada tattva. But one is a little more complex. 
So, again, the Prashna Upanishads say that it's only the soul that is the seer, the toucher, and so on, and is the karta. Because the soul only decides to do something. The body does not decide to do something. Any questions so far? We'll go on, but any questions so far? Huh? <laughs> what the super soul does. Okay. The super soul, as Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, Upadrashta um, Anumanta, so is witnessing. The soul, the Atma, is conscious only of his own body. Like for instance, I know if I'm hungry or not right now. You don't, you don't know, really. I'm not hungry, by the way. No, I mean, just in case you feel, well, maybe he's hungry. No, no I'm not hungry. Don't worry. But the fact that I am hungry or not, I'm only conscious. If my stomach is full or empty. Huh? Similarly, if you, somebody in the back, Krishna forbid us, some say, knee pain, only that person feels it. We don't feel it. Unless he, he tells us, we don't know. So this is the nature, the Atma. There is a Kshetra, there is a body, a field, and the Atma is only uh, uh, the Kshetragya, nowhere of the field in his own body. But the Paramatma is the knower of the field in everybody. And not only the body in the sense of the physical body, but also the mind. is witnessing. is witnessing our thoughts, our emotions, our plans. And not only us in this room, also outside. And also, not only in Bombay, in the old Maharashtra, in the whole of India, in the whole of the world, in all the planets. And the Bhagavad Gita, 13th chapter, gives the example, just like the sun is one but it's simultaneously on the head of millions and millions of people. Now it's a uh, quarter to two. The sun is pretty high in Bombay. The same sun is seen in Calcutta. is seen in Karachi. You may not like that in Karachi they see your same sun. But I'm, sorry for, I'm, I'm sorry for that. But they see the same sun. Eh? So Krishna says the Paramatma is one. And he pervades everything. So that's the first thing. He's conscious. We are conscious just what happened in our body, but he's conscious what happened in everybody's mind and bodies. And then Anumanta, unless he sanctions, unless he allows um, the action to actually be performed by the prakriti, by the mechanics of the body, the action won't be performed. So he's the controller. He stays in the back. Because obviously this world is made to make us think we are independent. But actually it's beyond every action. It's not responsible of the action, but it's behind every action. And without his permission, nothing moves. Nothing moves, nothing happens. It's a little clear? Okay, that's Paramatma. Atma, Paramatma. And that Paramatma is an expansion of Krishna. It's an expansion of Krishna. Shiroda Keshai Vishnu. This uh, Chatur Bhuj, Vishnu Murti, four armed Vishnu. It's in the heart. Anything else? Okay. So, let's analyze another of those verses that uh, Srila Prabhupada quoted in Bhagavad Gita. This time we analyze this Vedanta Sutra text. Karta, Shastrarta, Vatvat. What does it mean? Srila Vyasadeva say, this, the soul must be the Karta. And why? Shastrarta, Vatvat. Because the injunctions of the scriptures must make sense. Let's analyze. What does it mean? So 
So this is uh, the purport to Bhagavatam uh, 1087-25 by His Holiness uh, Ridana Maharaj and team. The Vedanta Sutra 2.3.17 unequivocally states the jiva soul is always a knower, gyota eva. Although the soul is in truth both conscious and active, the proponents of Sankhya philosophy wrongly separate these two functions of the living force, atmani yecha bhidam, ascribing consciousness to the soul, purusha, and activity to material nature, prakriti. So here, this is a very important point. If as devotees, uh, uh, you believe that, no, 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 the doer is only prakriti, and the soul is inactive, unknowingly, you are subscribing to the atheistic Sankhya philosophy. Gnostic Sankhya. To the uh, Sankhya Karika, by the atheist Kapila. You know, there are two Kapilas. There is Devahuti Putra Kapila, is a, a avatar of Krishna, and uh, he, he explained the Sankhya philosophy, the, the, the real Sankhya philosophy, you find it in the third canto of Bhagavatam. But there was another atheistic Kapila Deva. And he cut off God from the picture. He said there is only two things in reality. There is only Purusha and Prakriti. There is the soul and there is material nature. And he says material nature is active and the Purusha is inactive. So we have to be very careful, because if we also subscribe to do, that philosophy, we end up, without knowing, we end up as a, uh, uh, you know, Gnostic Sankhya. So we have to be careful. Okay, so Srila Vyasadeva refutes this idea in the section of the Vedanta Sutra that begins Karta Shastrarta Vatvat. The jiva soul must be a performer of action because the injunctions of scripture must have some purpose. What's the logic behind this statement? There are so many shastras and they tell us, do this, don't do that. Or do this and do it at this time. Don't do it at that time. Eat this, don't eat that. Okay? Hundreds and thousands of injunctions. Like chant Hare Krishna. Now, Srila Vyasadeva says, if the soul were not the doer, how could he ever choose to follow these injunctions? If the soul was not the doer, all these books of knowledge and injunctions, would that make no sense? Because everybody would just follow its karma, uh, the prakriti, the gunas, will just move us like uh, uh, puppets, like robots, like uh, automatons. And the fact that there are books, uh, Krishna says, bhavamadbhakto. But if we are not the doer, how do you do that? Am I, uh, okay, I, I, how I choose to think of Krishna if I'm not the doer? I should ask the prakriti, prakriti, please. Uh, Prakriti, help me think of Krishna. But then even that prayer I cannot do, because unless the Prakriti does the prayer, how am I, so you follow? So, therefore, see, Vedanta Sutra is to reject all the other philosophy, actually. I mean, so, you know, there are the Nyaya, Vaishishika, uh, Sankhya, Yoga, the Mimamsa, and Vedanta. So in the Vedanta, Vyasadeva explains basically all the mistakes of the previous philosophies. So when he, he, he used this expression, he's talking about, uh, he's talking about this uh, Sankhya philosophy, the atheistic Sankhya. So he says, doesn't make any sense, because the, the scriptures must make sense. Is it clear? Is it clear the logic? Huh? Will you be able to explain it to others for the rest of your life? This is something good to learn. Karta, shastrarta, vat vat. The soul must be the karta. Otherwise, we cannot follow the scriptures, and this, therefore the scriptures don't make any sense. It will be an empty, an empty 
a shell of words that nobody can follow anyway. Acharya Baladevi Dhyabhushan in his Govinda Bhashya explains the jiva, not the mode of nature, not the modes of nature is the doer. Why? Because the injunctions of scriptures must have some purpose. Shastrata Vatvat. After all, scriptural injunctions engage the living entity in performing prescribed action by convincing him that he can act to bring about certain enjoyable results. There are the um, every, every section, sometimes even in the Bhagavad there is the Pala Stuti, no? If you do this, you'll get this. If you do that, you'll get that. So the scriptures say, do this and you'll get that. And obviously, <laughs> the, the soul must have the capacity of doing that. So they say, look, you can go to the heavenly planets, Swargaloka, and uh, have a lot of uh, uh, free drinks and other amenities of life. Uh, you won't find uh, the Mumbai traffic there, uh, and so on, and all, all this. Or you can even decide to move to Vaikuntha Loka, and then um, you'll see the Lord Narayan surrounded by loving devotees. Lakshmi, Sahasha, Satasam, Brahma, Sevya, Manam. You'll see thousands of goddess of fortune uh, serving the Lord. You'll see perfected beings with four arms singing the glories of the Lord. You'll see flying uh, uh, swans and things. Great Sunday feasts there. <laughs> or, if you're not careful and you do sinful activities... You go to hell. And there's the, this, the detailed explanation, also in the Bhagavata. If you do this, you end up in this hell. If you do that, you end up in this other hell. And obviously, it's the same injunction. Do this or don't do that. So we do have the power to choose what to do or what not to do. And that's why we are responsible of our actions. Otherwise, this whole thing of karma would not make any sense. Why should I build karma if I'm not responsible? Why I should have a bad karma, good karma, or any karma, if it's all prakriti, it's all the gunas? We will be uh, hapless victims. Whatever the gunas, uh, whatever prakriti, Whatever the senses do, and we get the karma. No. Just like, say you drive a car, <coughs> and then you drive very, very neglectfully. You are inattentive. And then it's clearly it's your fault, you go and kill somebody in the street. They'll put you in jail. They won't put the car in jail. You may say, no, no, but the mechanics of the car, the wheels, the, the fault is of the wheels. It's the wheels that were turning. I was sitting there, I don't know. I was talking on the phone, sending an SMS, and a tweet. I was just tweeting, you know, what can I do, you know, I'm a very busy person, I cannot think of driving, I need to communicate, uh, it's the car, it's the car, it's the engine, put the engine in jail, it's the engine that made the car go very quickly, no judge will believe that, I put you in jail, although physically you never got in touch with the person, but you're responsible, you were driving the car, you're responsible. Similarly, if you commit a murder, you take a, a gun, you shoot somebody. They won't put the, 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 the gun in jail. They'll keep it as a evidence of the murder. But they'll put you in jail and they'll keep the gun in some archive. You may say, no, but I was just there. I just did like this. <laughs> but that's, that's enough. That's enough. So, this is very interesting. This is a famous verse. 
सर्वधर्म परित्यज मेक शरण व्रज अहम तम सर्वेभ्यो मुक्षयिष्यामि मा शुच abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me i shall deliver you from all sinful reactions do not fear i chose this verse because this verse shows that um, the surrendering to krishna does not depend on our karma one may be still sinful in other words may still have a, a, a substantial baggage of bad karma but here krishna clearly says you surrender unto me and i'll clean up your sins you see the chronology the sequence you surrender unto me and mukshaishyami in the future mukshaishyami i will deliver from sarva papibyo in other words even if you have still some karma carrying it with you you think can still surrender to krishna krishna doesn't say first get rid of all your bad karma and the good uh, get the good karma and then you can surrender doesn't say that so this also shows again connected with the idea of the karta the doer that we can choose surrender surrendering to krishna from any condition of life of course for somebody it will be a little difficult because bad habits and so many other uh, issues for somebody it will be more easier because maybe he has already built up a uh, sense control he built up a sattvic uh, mentality but everybody even a sinner can actually surrender to krishna it's a choice i surrender to krishna i decide i want to chant your name hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare once i was in brazil at the nova gokula farm and there was one lady very nice devotee very senior but she had some trouble with the chanting her rounds she had 10 children so you yeah, understand with 10 children <laughs> you know chanting six rounds and so she, but she was very sincere she was very sincere so even in the in the middle of the class she said prabhu i uh, you know i feel so bad that uh, you know i'm not chanting six rounds although it's a vow uh, like that uh, i made a vow and i cannot chant i, I just said look why you cannot chant let's chant together one round one uh, one mantra chant with me hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare so you just do this 1006 uh, 1728 times if you can do it one time you can do it 1728 times right i mean we can we can actually do it i won't do it now because we'll take a little time. but If you can chant one, you can chant two. If you can chant two, you can chant three. Is there any reason that if you can chant three, you cannot chant four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and twelve, and thirteen, and then you finish with one thousand seven hundred twenty-eight? You finish your rounds. I told her, and I said, hey, "Look, and these children, all these children, or you know, ten children." all over the place small house you know mommy this mommy that you should tell your children now and chant hey hare krishna keep quiet go <laughs> <coughs> mothers also have their rights it's in the geneva convention <laughs> uh, so i told her like this and she took it very seriously and she started chanting again 16 rounds not only that she decided because actually my wife com- preached to her look these children there's no school here devotee school we were seeing these children three four children 
going to the school every morning by bus. Brazil, Brazil is a very sensual place, you know, uh, sinful place. And so we, my wife told her, look, uh, come to my, you know, come to my, you know, the children here, what they'll do, they'll become very um, just sense enjoyers. So then she took it very seriously. She sold everything. She had the house, she sold the house, she bought tickets, which are very costly, from Brazil, and they moved uh, the whole family to Maya for. <laughs> and she's there now, the children are in the schools, like that, and many years ago. And then uh, when she sees me sometimes, she, she said, and she, she's very grateful. And I only told her that basically you are the doer, you can chant. Chant one mantra, you can chant 1728. So although she's senior to me, when, sometimes when she sees me, oh, Prabhujin, I'm very good to film. Oh, she, doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't speak English. She speaks Portuguese. But still, she's very, she's very grateful. And I only told her, look, you can do it. I only, basically, I just said, you can do it. That's all I told her. And she did it. Other people don't do. Other people put so many... Excuses. But besides the excuse, everybody can do it. <laughs> Something else? Okay, 1321. Karya karana kartritve. Hetu prakriti ruchate. Purusha Sukadhukanam Purusha Bhoktritve Etur Uchate Nature is said to be the cause of all material causes and effects, whereas the living entity is the cause of the various suffering and enjoyments in this world. In other words, whatever you see moving, it's all Prakriti. We don't see the Atma. We only see bodies, uh, bodies of trees, bodies of animals, bodies of mountains, bodies of planets, but we see bodies moving. So, karya, karna, kartritve, whatever moves is actually, that's a prakriti. But sukha, dhukha, nam, the consequences of the activities, that the soul is responsible. Okay? <laughs> Purusha sukha dukha nam bhukti tve hetur uchate. Is the purusha, the soul, the atma that is responsible for the good and bad we find in this world? And Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport suppose an entity is put into the body of a dog. As soon as he is put into the body of a dog, he must act like a dog. He cannot act otherwise. Very perfect uh, illustrations. And the next verse explains how this all happens. Because of association with the gunas. We choose to associate with the guna. And some guna brings us up. And some guna brings us down. Like birds. You see birds sometimes uh, they, they just put the uh, wing open. They don't flap. They get some ascending wind, you know, and they go up. You saw them, you know, they go up. They don't, they just go into the wind, and they don't flap. They just go, zzz, zzz, they go up. That's like Sattva Guna. We connect with Sattva Guna, we become clear. Our heads become clear. Our thoughts become clear. Our actions become clear. But then, <sighs> Raja Guna, we become agitated. We become uh, perplexed by so many desires, so many plans, so many aspirations, so many dreams. And then in Tamas Guna, we become very dark. We don't see ourselves, we don't see others. We start doing crazy things, violence, uh, very, very degrading, very degrading, going down, down, down. So, next verse is this one. Purusha prakriti stohi. 
भुंगते प्रकृति जन गुना करनम गुण संगुस्या सदसत योनि जन्मसु the living entity material nature thus follows the ways of life enjoying the three modes of nature this is due to his association with that material nature thus he meets with good and evil among various species okay so we create our karma we create our consciousness by us choosing to associate with some gunas and i'm not talking gunas in a abstract sense but the products of those gunas we choose it's our choice we have the karta remember so we choose to associate with passion passionate persons passionate ideas passionate entertainment we become passionate we decide to associate with tamasic people people who smoke drink um, do drugs very vulgar people every word is a bad word then we start also saying bad words and we start also smoking and if we associate with good people satsanga then we become good we become good because inside we are good actually but we need to some little encouragement some little support so when we associate with sattvic sattvic environment sattvic food sattvic thoughts or what to speak of devotional which is beyond sattva guna then we become we become pure we become clean we start seeing thing we start seeing things as they are and then we can choose our actions our freedom expands this is the laws of nature we have a, a, a we have allotted certain freedom like each of us a certain freedom if we misuse it we lose it our freedom get restricted like you are all free citizens of india right you can walk around the, the, the country wherever you want go you can go to nagpur you can go to the next state you can go everywhere from non occupied kashmir to uh, kanyakumari you're free you can go nobody can say anything nobody say but who are you i'm an indian national i'm going but then suppose you start having some crazy ideas and then you start looking at these shops and start thinking mm, maybe i should take those merchandise without paying so then you take something put in your pocket <laughs> then you are in the train you say mm these people must have money in the pocket let me try to pick their pockets sooner or later you get caught and that freedom gets restricted they put you in a condition so you cannot harm others because the government says look you were a free citizen you could go anywhere but then you started harassing other people you started stealing property then you cannot have this freedom anymore i'm sorry so in this life human life we have so much freedom actually we can uh, read books the thousands of books we can choose read books we can go to different internet sites we can talk with different type of people but if we choose the wrong people the wrong internet sites the wrong books next life we may become a dog and it's much harder to surf the internet <laughs> <coughs> a dog can still watch the screen but it's very much harder to read a book so the the freedom gets limited and when we become guswamis masters of the senses then freedom is expanded we can really choose what to think what to do what to say okay <clears throat> 
So this is the last verse I'll show now, then we'll take some questions, because this is kind of the conclusion. Tatraivam sati kartaram Atmanam kevalam tu yaha Pashyatyat Pashyatyakrita buddhitvam Nasa Pashyati Dhurmati Therefore, one who thinks himself the only doer, not considering the five factors, is certainly not very intelligent and cannot see things as they are. So this is the conclusion. We are the doers, but we are not the only doers. Hmm? If we think Kevalam, we are all the only doers, that's very bad. Huh? Durmatihi. Durmati. You understand Durmati? Very bad type of mentality. So, Sri Prabhupada translation is very clear. One who thinks himself the only doer, then it's illusion. Then it's a false ego. That's delusional. But if we don't think we are the doer at all, that's also an illusion. So thank you very much for your attention, for choosing to be here for the whole class. Uh, any question or comments? Doubts? Hare Krishna Roji, thank you very much for your wonderful class. Uh, in sixth chapter, I believe, in Bhagavad Gita, where this also comes into discussion that how a person, while seeing, touching, smelling, is actually not doing any of those. Fifth chapter. Yes. So, exactly the opposite which you, which you presented <laughs> from Prashna Upanishad. <laughs> and I was just contemplating, it's the enjoying mentality which connects. Uh, whether he is the doer or he is not the doer. In the sense, if he is not enjoying the fruits of the things, then he is not. So exactly, we were not going to that level of discussion, but definitely that aspect, if you can throw some light. Yeah, the soul uh, should understand that what's happening on the physical level, as I gave the example, the, the, the heartbeat uh, or uh, the breathing, or even more, more uh, conscious activities like going to sleep or, or they should they, the soul should understand I am not doing it I am not doing it but doesn't mean he is not responsible but he should not be uh, identify with those actions because actually again it's like a car Today some people identify with the car right the car they have they have a small car, they have a big car. So they have a big car, they have a big ego. No? So a, 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 a devotee, he may have a very muscular body, maybe very tall, handsome, but he's not thinking, I'm tall and handsome. He's thinking, I am shrunk to a uh, 10,000 the size of the tip of the air. So he's not identified with the actions of the body. He knows this is a machine, this is a car, and I'm not this car. And so those verses say that he can, although the, the master of the city of the nine gates, he can be peaceful in the city, knowing that, look, anything is happening is not really me. And then the same section, there is that verse that says, uh, just like... Uh, a lotus is on the water, but it doesn't become wet. The self-realized soul is always active, but it doesn't become conditioned. Kurvan api nalipyate. Kurvan is active, but because he acts for Krishna, he's not involved. And he knows, he knows that. He knows that I'm only using these instruments. For him to see the computer, to see his body, it doesn't really see much difference. This is a machine, this is a machine. I know that when the computer does something, it's not me. So I should also know that when the body does something, 
It's not really me. But of course I'm responsible. Like I'm responsible what I do with the computer. So I'm responsible what I do with the body. But I'm not the body. I'm not the computer. Like that. Yes, I see one hand. As you give me a particular example, what, uh, my question is, I mean, what could be the uh, best compar comparison with uh, utmost purity? I believe that would be the lotus flower, the flower of uh, lotus which is always in the hands of Sri Krishna or Sri Vishnu. And uh, the lotus flower is uh, always found in stagnant water or lakes or uh, say about uh, um, muddy water and so. So that would be, I mean, each and every person, whether it be uh, muscular, whether it be thin, or whether it be uh, fair, or whether it be dark, or whether it be, uh, say, about uh, uh, people from uh, any caste, creed, or there shouldn't be any caste discrimination, and people should be uh, knowledgeable enough, and that knowledge should have a certain amount of wisdom, so that uh, our energies uh, should be uh, focusing into the right direction, and probably that would be yeah you're right you're right in fact thank you in fact uh, in the same chapter fifth chapter uh, besides the lotus flower krishna also gives the analogy that uh, the knowledge burns all the consequences of sin to ashes so sometimes it's compared to a lotus sometimes knowledge is compared to fire, like fire is also purifier, no? You want to purify something, you burn or something, you purify gold, you put under the fire. So yes, knowledge, knowledge of your relation with God and uh, acting according to that knowledge will make you very pure. And these examples you gave, the burning or the lotus, are examples given to uh, indicate purity. Thank you. One, two, one. Here. Hare Krishna Guru. Uh, so, uh, till now I understood that the soul... <laughs> you're giving such a... I'm listening. I'm listening uh, with rapt attention. <laughs> uh, uh, the soul desires. So... I, I, I understand that the action of desiring is inherent in the soul. So that action is not caused by the modes of nature. So when he comes in contact with the modes of nature, so he starts desiring according to the modes. So the, desire, the action of desiring, that is inherent. So, so he is a doer of that action or not the doer of that action of desiring. I got confused. I mean, is he actually the doer of that action or not? See, it depends on what angle are you looking at, okay? As you said, <coughs> the soul is active by nature. And part of that nature is to have desires, to be conscious, to be aware. So to be uh, conscious means you're thinking of something. Uh, and the, and the, the mind works like Sambanda, Prayojana, Abhideya. No, you think this is me, my identity, my sense of self. Then um, I want something, Prayojana, I want to reach something. And then Abhideya, I will get to that. Okay? So... A pure devotee of the Lord also thinks like that. I'm the servant of the Lord, or I'm a preacher of the Lord's message. So what I want to do? Okay, I want a temple. I want to build a temple. Because there are people who come, who listen, Harikata. And so then, Abhideya, what I have to do? Okay, I need to get support, I need to find the land, like that. Okay? So, as you said, 
But when we are under lower modes, we have uh, lower desires. Because the soul, as you said, cannot be without desires. But because it's covered by the modes, we'll have sattvic, rajasic, or tamasic desires. So if the soul consciousness is contaminated by tamas guna, we'll have tamasic desires. I want drugs. I don't know what's the most popular drug here in Mumbai today. Of course, I mean, I don't expect you to be familiar, but <laughs> maybe you read newspapers and you make her here. Anyway, I don't know. Which one? What? What? Chai. Some orthodox monks here, please <laughs> forgive them. They are pure, you know, <laughs> they are pure. <laughs> okay, so anyway, drugs, you know what, what I mean. So somebody, oh, I want drugs, you know, um, because he really thinks that's the source of my pleasure, that... that and so then he will do the abhideya that needs to be done to get drugs, like that. So yes, our desires um, are shaped by the uh, gunas. We, 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 we are under the influence. Karanam guna sangosyat sadasat joni jammasu. So I'm not sure if I understood your question exactly. So, yeah, so. Although I'm talking since five minutes. <laughs> 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 so I what I came to say is that kartaham iti manyate ahankara vimudhatma kartaham iti manyate so actually he is not the doer so just that his desire which is inherent by nature gets a shape so that was my understanding so I was asking yeah, so but is my understanding right well it's not just desire because if you analyze the five factors there is the place, the body, huh? where the action is done. Or the in, then there is the senses engaged. Then there is the soul, the karta, huh? the responsible, responsible. And then there is cheshta, there is the endeavor. So desire in itself, it, it may be a, a factor of stimulating the, the action, but it's not part of the action itself. Hmm? So, desire, I may think something crazy, or I may have some desire, uh, but then if I don't act on that desire, the action is not performed. So, you need also the cheshta. It's not just desire. I may desire to make a lot of money, you know, but if I just sit, uh, you know, on a bench in the park and think, oh, I'd like to have a lot of money. Mm, yeah, money, money, money. You know, that, it's not an action. Because I'm only desiring. What you are talking probably is this one. 1818. Dhyanam geyam parigyata. Trividha karma chodana. Karanam karma karmeti. Trividha karma sangraha. So... Here Krishna describes two concepts, karma sangraha, or the constituents of action. Sangraha is also Hindi, sangraha, the accumulation. Huh? Karma sangra and karma chodana. So karma chodana, I think, is what you're discussing. What is the impetus for action? Hmm? So desire is part of that. So Krishna explained, knowledge... The object of knowledge and the knower are the three factors that motivate action. Hmm? So what kind of knowledge people have? So people have very poor knowledge, like animal knowledge. Even a dog has some knowledge. Who is my master? Who is the shopkeeper that beats me with a stick? They know that. <laughs> then the object of knowledge. What are you talking about? What are you 
studying? What are you researching? What are you thinking about? And then the knower. What kind of knower are you? Are you a sattvic knower? Are you a rajasic knower? Are you a tamasic knower? So that's the karma chodana. And Shri Prabhupada explains, before one acts, there is some impetus, which is called inspiration. Then work takes the form of action. First, one has to undergo the psychological process of thinking, feeling, and willing, and that is called impetus. So to me, it seems you're talking about this phase of the action. You're talking about the preliminary psychological phases which predisposes you to an action. Srila Prabhupada says thinking, feeling, and willing. So you are probably uh, uh, condensing those three in the desire, no? Thinking, feeling, willing. And then the action takes place. Am I correct? Yes. Sir. Okay. We, uh, how many people would like to ask a question? One, there was a hand here. Sometimes before, that, uh, as you said, sometimes before that, um, if any person is, uh, if person is uh, hungry, he him or he, he undergoes any pain, he him, uh, he himself ex uh, experience it. Others can't experience it, but there are some people who can't express. So, what would you say about the, about it? Especially in case of uh, tiny infants. Tiny infants. Yes. They can't express themselves that uh, they are hungry or uh, then they are undergoing a, pain. It's a question of guesswork. <laughs> I'm not joking. Mothers know that. Mothers know. The child cry. You don't know exactly what they want. Are they hungry? Are they cold? Are they hot? Sometimes he's crying. Maybe he's hot. You think, oh, it's cold. Let's put another blanket. <laughs> the guy freaks out. <laughs> That's why it's called Jamma Mrityu Jaravya Di. Jamma is a big trouble because you can't express yourself. Right? Am I, you know, ladies who are children? You have to guess. And then sooner or later you get it right <laughs> and if the child survives uh, <laughs> when they are grown up again they can talk to you and say no. <laughs> yeah uh, please use the mic that was in the case of tiny infants but there are some people uh, who can't, who don't want to express it to others because others should not, uh, others should not, uh, the others should not get um, carried away. Carried they, away. No, they shouldn't feel bad. So, what is exactly your question? You have somebody who has, say, stomach ache. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. But he doesn't want to tell others. Because <laughs> they may feel bad. Or they... Uh, well, the guy's stomach ache. So he doesn't tell people. And he keeps the, his stomach ache. Uh -huh, they, they, or, uh, they, so what is the question exactly? I'm, I'm trying to understand what exactly is your problem. I mean, what is the issue? Sometimes you want to say, sometimes they, you don't want to say. No, they, they should... Uh, or uh, they shouldn't get disturbed. I'm getting disturbed myself, frankly speaking. <laughs> because we are the doers, eh? sometimes we chose to express, and sometimes we choose not to express. Right? Like sometimes you're angry, maybe at your boss. I don't know if you work in a company, and your boss is bossing around. That's why they call him boss. <laughs> and then you're angry. And you feel like uh, taking uh, something and throwing it at him. <laughs> but you have a choice. Either I, I throw things or I insult him, and then you lose your job, 
or you choose to tolerate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It will be done, sir. <laughs> Just now coming, sir. So it's your choice. That, that's another aspect of being the doer. You follow. It's not that you are you are forced that anything happens in your body, you have to tell the world. Imagine if all the devotees here, anything that crosses their mind or their body, they will, have, they will have to say. It will become a chaos. So because they're disciplined, sense control, they decide, they don't say. So is it clear? Yes, okay. Thank you. So, uh, Prabhuji wanted to ask something. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Where are you? It's like a Akash Bani or something. <laughs> Prabhuji. <coughs> uh, oh, oh, it's okay. okay. Vyakta, Prabhuji, Vyakta, you know, yes. Prabhuji, Buddhist philosophy does not believe in soul, then what according to them, uh, who, is the, who is the doer, who is suffering the reaction of the karma, who goes to transmigration from one, one life to another, and who gets the liberation? And my other, other question is, please explain about what is Indo-Vedic psychology. I'll start with the second, which is simple. <laughs> See, there is a very rich body of uh, psychological information in the Indian tradition. And some comes from the Vedas, like Upanishad, and some come from more, more recent texts. And some may not even be strictly uh, Vedic or even Hindu. So by Indo-Vedic, uh, uh, it means all the body of knowledge related to psychology which is in the Indian tradition, but especially the Vedic, so it's called Indo-Vedic. It's not just Vedic, but Indo-Vedic. Is that clear? It's a very rich, very rich uh, body of knowledge. Bhagavad Gita, there's a lot of psychology, you know, it speaks about the mind, see, what we are reading there right now. Uh, karma chodana, how the karma takes action, first it needs to be an impetus. This is all psychology, basically. And not only psychology, but also psychotherapy. How do you, how do you treat personality disorders? Hmm? In other words, how you go from a tamasic, rajasic personality type to a sattvic personality type. Everything is given in the, in the Vedic. So it's much more than the Western tradition. The first thing, uh, if somebody is atheistic, doesn't believe in the soul, it seems you are referring to Buddhism. Are you referring to Buddhism? Ah, yes, Prabhuji, I am referring to Buddhism. Huh? I am referring to Buddhism. Okay. So, the Buddhists, uh, they believe that uh, it's the mind that transmigrates uh, over many births. So, they accept samsara, but they don't accept atma. So, they think it's the mind. See, they cannot explain who perceives the mind. In other words, it's a very kind of uh, orphan philosophy because they have the mind... But again, the mind is inert. But they say the mind experiences, the mind doesn't experience anything. And their concept of liberation is dissolving the mind. So, Hindu Mayavadi are worshipper of light, and uh, Buddhist Mayavadi are worshipper of darkness. That's a basic thing. That, that's it. You are certainly the doer. I mean, that's, that's clear. I mean, you're no, no, very no, active uh, today. No, no. <coughs> the, the only reason I'm speaking about is that uh, I just need uh, what, to express something. What are you something. speaking about? Because you started without the mic. Uh, I'm very much comfortable with, without mic and uh, with mic also. So, <laughs> I love the rains and also the sun. So, I mean, I'm like that. 
as I uh, as I was expressing myself that I mean there are some people who look at things at the long term perspectives uh, for a permanent aspect of life, and there are some people who look at life uh, or look at uh, any particular thing for a short term perspective for a shorter duration of time uh, with uh, an expiry date as such. And uh, well, um, what I believe is that I mean. Uh, uh, for a longer duration or uh, for a long term perspective that uh, is always uh, needed to be permanent and that is permanent and whether uh, it depends on what you deserve and what you desire there are again two different aspects of life and there are two different uh, personalities of a particular person so this is all about uh, yeah understanding this particular philosophy is a bit like a bouncer where you don't understand it very easily and this uh, so I mean <laughs> uh, my point is to express uh, it's very simple but uh, I mean uh, uh, if we as an individual uh, we uh, take these human birth, say about uh, we, uh, we are born in this particular species, say about after 84 lakhs of uh, life, uh, life cycle and uh, when we look at every perspective or when we look at everything or when we look at any uh, life aspects, say about for longer duration, for long term perspective or for, or for a permanent aspect, I believe Lord Krishna or say about uh, the Supreme Personality or even God Almighty is going to help us and uh, that's going to help us in uh, many ways and uh, that would be so. So I agree what uh, uh, you explained but uh, my way of looking at things is always at the long term perspective, is always at the permanent aspects and maybe people uh, find it very difficult to absorb this particular philosophy, I don't care. Maybe people uh, like my philosophy, I don't care. This. Okay, so Hare Krishna and God bless you, sir. Hare well. uh, Prabhu, you said surrendering to Krishna does not depend on our karma. So, are you referring to people who, are, who have already taken to Krishna consciousness? Or it's just in general because, because like uh, spiritual philosophy and the, you know it, it it it's a subtle subtle thing. Subtle. It is a subtle thing. Spiritual understanding, spiritual philosophy, the understanding of the God, the philosophy, the spirituality is a subtle thing to understand. I don't understand the word. Subtle. 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 Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. It yeah. is a subtle thing to understand. <coughs> yeah. So unless. Uh, I mean, uh, unless one has some karma, it is very difficult to understand the concept of God and, you know, things like that. And unless you understand the, you know, uh, concept of God and its powers, you know, it's, it will be very difficult to surrender. So, when you said surrendering, surrendering to Krishna does not depend on our karma, are you like, uh, you know, referring to people who are already taken to uh, spirituality or Krishna consciousness or in general? In general, of course, you cannot surrender to Krishna unless you heard about Krishna. So you must have been introduced to Krishna consciousness, at least to some extent, to have some information. What, who is Krishna? What does it mean surrender to Krishna? So some introduction must be there. But yes, anybody who has some introduction to Krishna consciousness can surrender to Krishna. And it, not, it does not depend on karma. Because karma, the reaction, action and reaction of a material activity do not produce bhakti. Like uh, sometimes people... <laughs> Uh, ask astrologers. My wife is an astrologer, so um, sometimes people ask, "What about my spiritual life or my bhakti?" But that doesn't depend on the planets. You follow? Now, if you have you no know, strong Jupiter, you may say, "Well, you know, there is some sense of you know, religiosity like that," uh, but in itself doesn't produce bhakti. Uh, you may be attracted by religious. Uh, literature, religious activities, but doesn't produce, it's not that because the planet makes you surrender to Krishna. 
No, it doesn't work like that. So it's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. Like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, 1858, Machita sarva durgani mat prasada tarishasi atachitva mahankaram nashroshasi vinangshasi. If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. Or machita, you become conscious of me, sarva durgani, all the problems. Mat prasada tarishasi. By my mercy, you go beyond. But if, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through the false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. Atachetvam ahankaran nashroshyasi vinangshasi. If you don't listen, you'll be destroyed. So the choice is the, the person. So many people came through this door, Right? And sat sometimes regularly. Some people listen, not only listen in the sense that some sound goes in the hole of the, of the head, but listen and then say, Yeah, it makes sense. I want to surrender. I want to chant Hare Krishna. And some people come, listen, but they go. They don't listen. And therefore, they will have to take birth again because that's, you know, that's, that's, what, that's a default setting. If you don't surrender to Krishna, you take birth again. Okay. So, should we close here? Thank you very much for your attention, for choosing to listen carefully. I hope you found something interesting, something instructive. Shri Bhad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Shri Shri Radha Gopinath, Lalita Vishaka Devi Ki, Shri Shri Gaur Nitai Ki, Shri Natish Gopal Ki, Nitai Gaur Premanandi.